Hi, I'm John Peters, and in this video, I'm going to make this frame. It's solid walnut and rosewood, and I'm pretty excited because this is also going to be my first giveaway video. And if you're a painter or an artist, or if you know someone who is, it's kind of a cool thing to win because it will also come with this panel. And I'll show you how to attach that panel at the end of the video. So, uh, how do you win? Just like me on Facebook and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. And um, I guess what I'll do is I'll pick a random comment. So comment on this video. You can comment as many times as you like. And a month from the date that the video is posted, I will pick a random comment and send you a message on YouTube. Uh, so anyway, let's get started making this frame. I wanted to mention that this frame is being made up out of scraps. And in fact, really that's the design for the molding. Uh, I had made a piece of molding or a few pieces of molding a couple of months ago. I, I made a big walnut uh, frame for a mirror. And so I made all this molding here and it would get sort of a back band like this. Anyway, uh, last week I had to make a two inch deep float frame and I didn't have any walnut and I didn't want to go to my supplier because I just didn't want to burn up half of a day to, uh, to do that. So I figured, well, I'll just sacrifice this molding because I haven't, uh, I, I feel like I really don't have a need for it. I made it as an extra in case I made a mistake while I was assembling. So that being said, once I cut a two inch piece off of here to make that float frame, I was left with this piece of molding here. And I looked at it and I thought, geez, that's kind of nice. And I don't want to throw it away. I don't like to throw away wood. I don't have a hard time throwing away most stuff, but wood, wood seems to be difficult for me to throw away. I always think I could probably make something with that. So anyway, um, I have this nice piece of molding here that's almost 30 inches long. And what I'm going to do is cut it into four pieces and then I'll cut my miters and then we'll assemble it. I'm going to put a few scribble marks with my pencil on what I'm using for the inside of the frame. And that's just to help identify the inside of the frame when I'm cutting the miters on my chop saw. And that's simply because I don't want to cut the miter in the wrong direction. Now I've got just enough molding to make a frame that's seven and a quarter inches and that's the outside of the frame. So to make it a little bit simpler or less confusing when I go to cut the miters on the chop saw, I'm going to first cross cut this piece of molding to seven and three eighths because I do have a little bit of extra room, basically an eighth of an inch. Um, so that's why I'm going to cut it an eighth of an inch heavy. And then I'll cut it to the exact length on my last miter cut. Now that I have my four pieces of molding cut to length, I can cut a miter on one side. Remember the pencil line that I put on the inside of the molding. You'll notice that the short end of the miter is where the pencil line is, that's the inside of the frame, and the long point of the miter is on the outside. Now that I've finished cutting a miter on each piece of molding, one miter on each, I can now flip that piece of molding, and you can see I have a stop line drawn onto my fence, and I'll slide the piece of molding to that stop line, and that's my next cut. With the molding cut, I can now assemble the frame, and I'm using three quarter inch nails in my nail gun and a little wood glue to do that. Now that I've finished building the main part of the frame, because this is really kind of like the foundation of the frame, because then you can just build upon it, I need to attach a piece of plywood to the back of the frame. And this is how the panel or the painting will be secured to the frame. And to do that, I'm going to use quarter inch plywood that I've already cut into two inch strips. I'm using a little wood glue and the same three quarter inch nails in my nail gun to attach the plywood. And now that the plywood is attached to the back of the frame, I'll flip it over and you can see how the panel 
fits really nicely right inside the frame, just flush with the edge of the molding. Okay, I'm gonna bend down here to get in the shot. Uh, the last piece of molding that goes on the frame here is this piece of rosewood, and I've got just enough to go around the outside of the frame. But before I attach this piece of molding to the frame, I'm gonna put a roundover bit in my router and just soften this edge a little bit. Now I'm attaching the rosewood to the outside of the frame and I've put two pieces of quarter inch plywood on my workspace to lift the frame up and that will give me the correct reveal around the frame. As I work around the frame, I try to remove any glue with a little water and a rag. And in this tight spot here, a wet paintbrush seems to work pretty good. I attached the last piece of molding to the frame. I sanded the frame, and I also rounded over the back of the frame the same way I did uh, on the front of the frame here, that little round over. Now the next step is to stain the frame, and to do that I'm going to use Minwax Walnut Stain that I've thinned with a little bit of paint thinner. I've let the stain sit for a few minutes, now I'm going to wipe off all of the excess with a clean rag. Okay, well that's about it. The frame is done, and I thought I'd mention what I used for a finish, and that is shellac. So I put a thin coat of shellac on the frame, and then I sprayed it with a few coats of lacquer right out of the spray can, and that's fine for a project this small. Uh, and I put a little painting of mine here, so you can see it's kind of fun how a frame like this will set off a little painting. And this is just a painting I did uh, down by the beach where I live. And uh, you know, they look pretty cool. You put them on an easel like this and you can put it on a mantle or a bookcase. And it's kind of a nice way to look at a small painting or display art. So um, what I'm going to do now is bring the camera closer and show you how to remove the panel and also how to put the panel back in place. The panel's held in the frame with these four Phillips head screws. So to remove the panel, you simply remove the screws. Now, I've put a black indication line here, and that's so when you put the panel back into the frame, lining up this indication line here will make sure that the panel fits in the frame with a perfect reveal. Also, the only reason why this plywood is red is because it was just a scrap piece of plywood that was hanging around the shop. And then to put the panel back in place, simply apply a little downward pressure on the panel and reattach it with the same screws. Now, obviously, you'd want to make sure that the painting's dry before you do that. Well, you can see it's pretty simple to take the panel in and out of the frame. So again, if you'd like to win this frame, uh, just leave a comment and I will pick a random comment after the video's been on YouTube for a month. And all you need to do to be eligible to win is just subscribe to my channel and like me on Facebook. And I'll be sure to put a, a link, a link in the description uh, for my Facebook page. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.